The content optimization tools I'm about to show you have helped me get a 96% ranking improvement rate in Google. And I've used them to get results like this, this, and this, even through countless Google updates. By leveraging these tools, you'll gain a huge advantage over your competitors. And think of it like playing chess while they're stuck playing tic-tac-toe. So now let's jump right into SEO content optimization tool number one, which is none other than Google itself. First thing I wanna do here is I just wanna look at the actual search results and get a feel for what's going on. So number one, to no surprise, there is an AI overview, okay? And so we've been studying these AI overviews pretty extensively. And typically you'll see a lot of the citations here are usually for competitors or websites that are ranking on the first page of Google for this keyword. So usually it gets pulled from here, but that is not always the case. And there is no really consistency to what I've seen as far as the citations. The only consistent variable is that the large majority are typically from websites that are ranking anywhere between position one and 25, typically, even as far as 30 I've seen. So the point is, if you wanna actually show up in the AI overviews, you need to rank well in Google for that keyword. So it looks like Google is pulling from different sources. So we have YouTube, we have LinkedIn, and we even have a Medium article, okay? So what this tells me is in addition to ranking our website, we also wanna think about how can we rank on YouTube? How can we rank with using a LinkedIn article and how can we rank with a Medium article? If I really wanna attack this the right way, I'm gonna build out a dedicated LinkedIn article as well. I'm gonna build out a dedicated Medium article with the intent to try to capture as much ground here as I possibly can. Can. What we're seeing here is quite the variety of different SERP features, which tells us this is not gonna be as simple as just ranking our one single page on our website. We need to be thinking about, okay, we need to create an asset specifically for Google. We need to create an asset for YouTube, at least one, possibly create an asset on LinkedIn and Medium. And then we also need to consider the fact that maybe we need to get into some forums or with some user generated content. So that gives us you know, at least five different channels where we need to attack this keyword to ensure that we're getting maximum visibility. The next thing you wanna do is start to examine the competitors, okay? So we wanna see, are the competitors doing anything that we are not doing? And what we can see here is that the competitor that was pulled in the AI overview, they seem to be the most comprehensive as far as actually talking about each of the opportunities that exist for content optimization tools. This is clearly an indication that we probably, if we want to be able to do well for this keyword, we probably need to be mentioning many of the other types of tools that exist out there to confirm that we are the most relevant for this, this one keyword phrase. Essentially, when it comes to the relevance of our page, we do want it to have some similarities to the, the top ranking results because this just confirms that we're hitting on all the appropriate entities, fancy word for topics, and that ensures that we, we are at least getting the baseline that we need. Same with this one, once again, another big listicle with all the opportunities. So clearly that's what Google's looking for, right? Google is, is kind of showing its cards as far as what it, what it wants with these AI overviews. And it, it's clear that listicles seem to be what Google's trying to pull from the most, okay? That, that just seems to be what its preference is in this current moment. This could change tomorrow, right? So you gotta be careful. But we're starting to see kind of a, a, type, a content type that seems to be working for this particular keyword. The trend here is that listicles seem to be the winning format. And when you can identify a winning format, and we're kind of looking at like what's the majority here, that's probably the angle you want to go with. And now for my second favorite SEO content optimization tool, rankability. What we want to see here is do we still have gaps in this content? So this content was originally published, I think, in September 2024 or something. And originally when I had created it, uh, you know, I covered the topic to the fullest extent at that time. But over time, as new competitors enter into this particular market or these SERPs, that's going to shift the dynamic a little bit. So there is somewhat of a moving target in some ways. And that's why you got to stay on top of this. And I recommend probably at least every three to six months revisiting uh, a content asset because more than likely you're gonna have at least one, possibly two new competitors in there, which means you're gonna have new topics that are gonna be entering into this. And so that's why you gotta kinda of stay on top of this. So what I would do if I wanted to re-optimize this page is I actually go and sort this by unused, okay? And start to look at these different topics that we have not covered. 
And if there's a significant amount that I feel we probably should cover, then I'm gonna to start to look for opportunities in this content to start to hit on it more. Next thing that you wanna do, and this can seem very counterintuitive, but make it really easy for the users to navigate your content. So one thing that I like to do is like, I want them to click on these links because if I get them to click, what I'm doing is I'm generating positive user signals on this page. So the more you get your users to interact with your page, the more likely it is that we're gonna be sending positive signals to Google's algorithms, and of course to Google Chrome, which is tracking our behavior. So this, this, these things are all connected. So don't be, don't be afraid to add things to your content that incentivize users to engage. Okay, that's really important. And then of course, there's some other elements on this page that you can, you know, you can kind of study and look at, but as a general rule of thumb, short paragraphs, lots of headings, lots of visuals, uh, lots of different elements to break up the text. Okay, so just all the stuff that has been proven to work, right? And even changing kind of like the content format here a little bit. These, this is all designed to to interrupt patterns. We don't want the user to, you know, you know gl their eyes glaze over when they're looking at this content. We want to have a lot of uniqueness that kind of stops them from scrolling. Okay, we want them to read. We want them to consume, and we can actually see how users are consuming our content. There's actually a tool we can use, and I'll be showing you here in a second. But this is really critical, okay? And there's just general rules of thumb. Another thing is too, if you have videos, try to inject those videos into the content as well. If someone watches this video and stays on this page and dwells on this page, it could be a positive user signal. The other big element of this is probably on the link building side. So. There's one service I do recommend when you're trying to build site authority. There's a few that I recommend. Um, you can obviously use a, a, a service like Logenix. Uh, I, you know, I, I've used this service many, many times, the shop my list option. Okay, so you can go and select your keyword, oppor your link opportunities. But the other one that I do recommend actually is digital PR. And this is basically, they just take all of the hard work and they just do it for you, okay? So they're gonna go out there and get some very, very powerful links. You can promote your asset. Informational assets work really, really well. Uh, and that's an option. You can you, you try to push this one asset and obviously wanna drive links directly to this page. But if you don't wanna do that, they can also drive links directly to the homepage. They can create new content for you. There's so many things that they can do to help you drive really powerful links. And honestly, for the last couple of years, I've pretty much only focused on like the most powerful relevant links because they seem to be the only thing that really moves the needle. So I'm actually willing to pay more for a link uh, and that's not necessarily like paying for the link, but necessarily, but it could also just be the investment of time to acquire that link. I'm more willing to do that because one really good link is far more powerful than a bunch of, you know, 20 mommy blog links. Okay, so what I recommend is using a service like this if you want to be able to outsource this and you have the available budget. And this will help you really start to build the authority of the site. Because like I said, you can only take your content so far. Once you've fully optimized it, once you've got information gain, elements in it, it's unique, and users are engaging with it well, there's, you know, you can wait for sure. You can just wait to see how far you go, but you are gonna hit that plateau point in your rankings. And at some point, it's probably gonna be an authority deficit that you're gonna to have to narrow. So to narrow that authority deficit, you're of course gonna to have to go out there and get backlinks. So highly recommend a service like digital.pr. Uh, I'll have a link below the video. The third best content optimization tool is Hemingway. So every single one of the blog posts, YouTube scripts, or social media pieces of content that I create goes through Hemingway first. And so I'm always writing my content in here and then oftentimes taking what what are the some of the recommendations here from Hemingway and then running them through ChatGPT to improve them even further, okay? So this is one technique I've been using recently. So if you're using AI content, let's say you're not gonna write it from scratch, you can run it through Hemingway and when you see the flaws in the content, you can take these little these little issues that it's having and then run it back through ChatGPT and have it refine it based on the recommendations of Hemingway. So the goal here is to ultimately, there's two things I'm trying to achieve with content. Number one is make it lean and practice a lot of brevity, okay? Make it simple, easy to read. That's what good internet-based internet content is easy to read. Uh, it's, it does not follow standard writing conventions. This is not like you're writing a dissertation. Uh, you're not getting this graded in school. Uh, you don't get grades for your content. The only grade that matters for your content is that users actually read it. 
That's the grade that matters. They read it, they consume it, they share it, they convert because of it. Those are the things that we care about. We don't care about uh, you know, getting a grade in school. Okay, We care about actions that are taken because of the content. And it's been proven for many, many years, decades more than likely. You go back as far to you know standard advertising principles from many, many years ago when David Ogilvy was writing copy, that simple content, simple copywriting works. And now for the final best content optimization tool, Mouseflow. So once you have your content all squared away, the next thing you want to do is install a tool like Mouseflow or Hotjar or one of these user tracking softwares. Here's an example of my blog post about best SEO books. Okay, and what I'm looking at is where are users clicking on this page? Now, one thing is not just on the clicks, but we also want to look also at the movement. Okay, and movement's actually good because you can just kind of see overall where it tends to be isolated and more movement around a section is a signal that there's more engagement in that section. Okay, so we're looking at this, there's clearly a lot of engagement over in this first section. Okay, and that's a good sign. Keep going down. And naturally, as we go down the content, you're gonna see less and less engagement, right? That's just the nature, the nature of any post. And I'll prove this by looking specifically at the scroll behavior. I've studied an ungodly amount of scroll behavior across many pages, across many websites, and I can tell you, even the best content doesn't keep everyone, okay? And so you can see here, 90% of people make it to this first headline. Okay, so you know they say 80% of people uh, only read the headline. So that's not necessarily true in this case. But as we go down here, you'll see that the drop off becomes pretty severe, right? So we keep go down here, and eventually we're to it looks like the number three, and we've lost about 60% of users already at this number three, right? So only 40% of people have made it this far, and we keep going down. And as we go to the very bottom, we've only seen that about 20% of people actually make it all the way to the end of this asset. Okay, so that means 80% of people did not make it to the end of this content, which classic 80, you know, 80, 20 rule here. But this is what you can expect on most pages. Even good pages will have this type of trajectory. Now, the, the reason why this is important data is because if you see that people are dropping off really early, it could be a sign that maybe your headline isn't good, maybe you're not fulfilling intent for that keyword. It could be a sign that your intro isn't very good. Okay, so these are all ideas that we can we can look at this and we can split test and see if we can see an improvement because you can you can grab a particular amount of data. So let's say you had this data over the course of two weeks, you could run a split test for two weeks and see if there's a variance in the data, right? And maybe you found that maybe the headline was off, so you adjust the headline and users engage with the page better, okay? Now, the reason why this is so important for SEO is because this is actually more than likely what Google is doing as well, right? When they go, when you go on Chrome, it's tracking everything that you're doing, and more than likely, if users are interacting with this page in a, in a bad way, that could possibly signal to the algorithms that this page does not satisfy intent for this keyword or that it's a low quality page, okay? So I'll show you another example. This is a page that's gonna have a lot of engagement, okay? So this is a script timer that I created. Funny enough, created this with ChatGPT in about an hour, but you can see, we'll go ahead and look at the click movements on this. And you're gonna see this is this is what you would want to see for a free tool, right? So we see the we see the engagement here is really, really high. Lots and lots of engagement on this tool. Now, funny enough, when we scroll down, look at the content down here. This content was put here just for SEO purposes, and look how much engagement it gets, virtually nothing. So a test I can run here is just eliminating this content altogether and seeing if it affects the rankings at all. And I would suspect if, you know, my hypothesis is that if I remove it, uh, it's not gonna affect performance. I don't think it will negatively affect performance at all, to be totally honest, because there's so much engagement on this that I think that will far outweigh any just content that's here just for SEO purposes, okay? So going back to the movement patterns as well, you'll see there's just so much information you can gather from this. Now, this is not really a surprise here, but the amount of engagement on the tool itself is what is likely driving performance for this. So I think this ranks maybe, I don't know, number four or number three for script timer. And I don't really have topic authority for that, that topic, right? I'm not, I don't have like a video blog, for example. But the point is when I look at this 
and I see that this content gets zero engagement, to me it's a sign that this content is basically worthless. So this would be a good test to run just to see like, okay, let's run an A-B test. We have tons of data already about this page. So we're gonna run a split test where we just get rid of that content and just focus on like the user purely getting what they want for this keyword.